We learned from the previous session how the Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain and how it spread across much of Europe and America. We also learned how it changed different industries through the introduction of new technologies and alternative fuel sources. However, the most important change in humanity during the Industrial Revolution is the change in working conditions. Life became even harder during this period, especially for the poor. And nothing much has changed for society, with only a handful of people still controlling wealth, while the rest are still deprived and underserved. Around the mid-1800s, educated middle-class thinkers began questioning the effect of industrialization to ordinary people. One of these thinkers is the German lawyer Karl Marx. Living in Great Britain during the height of the Industrial Revolution, he observed the harsh working conditions ordinary British workers had gone through. He felt that lower class workers deserved more from wealthy business owners who were making a huge profit from industrialization. However, with the business owners and the government working together, he felt that there is a slim chance that the poor can have a better standard of living under the current capitalist economic system. For Marx, the only way for true social equality to rise is to destroy capitalism, and he believed that the only way to do so is for the lower class to overthrow the government and seize the factors of production, land, labor, and capital from the wealthy few. By taking control of these factors of production, the lower class can now distribute wealth fairly and affordably. He called this new system of distributing wealth equally as socialism. Under the new system, the society would change from its unequal and unfair structure to a classless society, since people all have the same share of the nation's wealth. Under this new social structure, there will be no need for a state or government where everybody will live equally, peacefully, and harmoniously, a society which he calls a communist society. Marx expressed his beliefs through his books Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto, which were published all throughout Europe. This exposed other educated middle class thinkers to the ideas of socialism and communism and encouraged them to establish these systems in their respective countries. In 1917, the young Russian lawyer Vladimir Lenin and his communist followers overthrew the Russian monarchy at the height of World War I and established the Soviet Union. In 1949, after a bloody civil war against the Chinese nationalists, the Communist Party of China, led by Mao Zedong, established the People's Republic of China. However, it wasn't just lower-class workers and middle-class thinkers who voiced their discontent during the Industrial Revolution. With women becoming more active in the workplace, some of them felt they need the same rights which men enjoy at that time. Women activists such as Lydia Becker and Emmeline Pankhurst demanded that women should be given suffrage for the right to vote and participate in politics. By having such right, they can also uphold and protect their status in society and be in equal footing with men. These activists banded together to form the suffragettes or women's groups campaigning for the right to vote. These suffragettes emerged in Great Britain and the United States during the early 1900s and after much campaigning, the respective governments of these countries granted their women the right to vote.